بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم People find it difficult to accept that the close companions of the Prophet would do such a thing to his family, especially to his beloved daughter. Many times we hear, even from the scholars from Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, even the Sufis who actually respect the Ahlul Bayt, when it comes to this incident, they said, no, we don't believe in it. They find it difficult. And immediately we hear the words that this story has been fabricated by the Shias to tarnish the image of the, some of the companions of the Prophet. And their target in this whole accusation is Sulaim bin Qais, one of the earlier narrators of Hadith and a disciple of Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali bin Abi Talib alayhi salatu wasalam. Sulaim bin Qais was a trusted and close companion of Ali. There is no doubt about his personality, his authenticity, you know, his character. Even though those ulama who would not accept the present existing, you know, version of Kitab i Sulaim are not doubting the authenticity of this person known as Sulaim bin Qais, including people like Ayatollah Khoui, in his latest book, um, one of his last legacy was the book on Ilm al-Rijal. He's very clear about it. That whether you accept the present version as the authentic version of what Sulaim bin Qais wrote is something you can de debate on it, question it. But as far as the personality and character of Sulaim bin Qais is concerned, is beyond any, you know, uh, doubt that he is a siqa and a reliable companion of the Prophet. But I'm not even gone, going to his book. There is a very famous Sunni scholar, a faqih and a mushtahid in his own right, by the name of Abu Ubaid al-Qasim bin Salam. He was an expert in financial matters. He wrote a book called Kitab al-Amwal. He died in the year 224 of Hijrah. Just to give you the timeline from the Shi'i perspective, Abu Ubaid was contemporary of our 10th Imam. So now you have this 10th Imam's time, Abu Ubaid is there, Bukhari comes just after him. He is very much highly respected by the Sunni scholars. They describe him as Al Imam, the leader, Al Hafiz, somebody with a very good memory. Husnul Riwaya, good in narrating a hadith. Sahihun Naql, authentic in quoting a hadith. These are the attributes that they have for him. He was a mushtahid and a faqih, a jurist in his own right. Abu Ubaid there talks about an incident narrated by Abdurrahman bin Auf. Abdurrahman bin Auf is a prominent, you know, um, companion among the school of the Sahaba. And Abdurrahman bin Auf actually described his visit to Abu Bakr when the Khalifa was on his deathbed. So this is the last days of Abu Bakr. Abdurrahman bin Auf as a friend goes to visit him, Ayadat. And he is the one who caught something which is very important. He says, Abu Bakr told me that I don't have any regrets for what I've done. Except three things. I had wished I had asked about them from Rasulullah. Put it on the side, it's not relevant to our theme. Then he says, and there are three things. Amma'ani la asi ala shay'in illa salasa fa'altuhum. He says, but I really regret, do, I do not regret on anything, except three things that I have done. I wish I had not done them. Abu Ubaid, such a high-ranking scholar, considered to be trustworthy, sahihun naql, very authentic in, you know, 
quoting the statements, mentions two things that Abu Bakr regrets doing. But when it comes to the third one, he says, وَوَدُدْتُ أَنِّي لَمْ أَكُنْ فَعَلْتُ I wish I had not done. After that, Abu Ubaid changes the words, kawa wa kawa. I wish I had not done so and so. Or you know, sometimes you just put three dots in the statement where you don't want to quote. So these are the three dots, kava wa kava. And then actually he says, La uridu askuruha. Abu Ubaid says, I don't feel comfortable to mention that. A prominent scholar coming before Bukhari, known as Sahihun Naql, you know, um, he's concealing one of the three regrets of Abu Bakr. I would like to make a point here. Many people, when, we, when they will hear, what is this kava wa kava? They will say, oh, this is fabrication, this is za'if narration, not valid. Go and ask Abu Ubaid. If this was a fabrication and a lie, he could have written it down and give his comment that I don't believe this narration to be true. But he doesn't do it. He conceals this. He is hiding that. It means in, one, in, in views of this scholar, whatever he is hiding and concealing was the truth. But he wasn't comfortable because of his own affiliation to the group or the, his aqidah. And you know, so this narration cannot be, and this is what they have done. Many Sunni scholars, when they read the whole story, they say, oh, this is, this is, you know, this is all fabrication. Well, this is not a Shia guy. Abu Ubaid was your own scholar, coming before Imam Bukhari. But remember, the truth cannot be hidden. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is there. Abu Ubaid hid the truth. But there are other Sunni scholars who have come and given the entire quotation and the words of Abdurrahman bin Auf in its entirety. Just a generation after Abu Uwaid, you come to Tabari, those who read uh, Muslim history, Islamic history, you must be familiar with the name of Tabari, a very fun famous uh, Sunni scholar known for his history, but he was not only a historian, he was a faqih and a mujtahid in his own right. He didn't follow any of the four malahib. He followed his own fatwas. And he also has a very prominent tafsir. So he was a historian, a jurist, and a commentator of the Quran. Very, very learned person. He comes a generation after Abu Ubaid, he lived in uh, 224 to 310th year of the Hijrah. And when you look at Abu Ubaid, he died in 224. So he's just next generation after Abu Ubaid. Tabari in his book, through his own sources and channel and sanad, quotes the conversation of Abdurrahman bin Auf about the regret of the first Khalifa. And the words that Abu Ubaid had as kava wa kava, look at the narration from Tabari. Tabari says that the Khalifa said, وَعَمَّ الثَّلَاثَ وَدَدْتُ أَنِّي تَرَكْتُهُنَّ فَوَدَدْتُ The three things that I regret, that I would, I would have not done it. فَوَدَدْتُ أَنِّي I wish Lam akshif bayta Fatima an shay'in. He's saying, I wish I had not. Akshif means opened up or exposed. Forcefully open something. I wish I had not opened up the house of Fatima for any purpose. 
He says, وَإِن كَانُوا قَدْ عَلَّقُوهُ عَلَى الْحَرْبِ Even if they had closed that door for the purpose of fighting, and even if they were conspir conspiring against me, I wish I would have not exposed the house of Fatima. Open the door of the house of Fatima. And this is where we see, you know, this is a confession from the first Khalifa himself. So don't tell me this is a story fabricated by the Shias or by Sulaim bin Qais. When you have this simple confession for, from the perpetrator, this is sufficient to establish the fact that the house of Bibi Fatima was attacked. That is the basis of the event. And this is where, you know, people say, but well, all the stories we hear about it, the details about here. My response is very simple. If those who are responsible, they confess to this happening of this event, the details you don't ask from those who have done it. Go and ask the Muslim. If the Zalim comes and says, yes, I have done it, but how did I do it? To what extent did I do it? We don't need to hear it from the Zalim. We can hear that from the Muslim. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad.